Following on from the previous video, I was urging you parents out there to sacrifice scope, to sacrifice scope in exchange for depth. So the aim is to take your your seven or eight year old child all the way to a level of age of age, let's say fifteen. So uh, so so we would teach them nothing else but but algebra, so that they are fully fluent in algebra, and then we can then tackle other topics. So if you have a child that's maybe 12 or 13, they can still jump in and follow the process and we will take them to a level to a level of, of age 15. Because by the time they get to this level, they are able to manipulate algebra. If they can manipulate algebra, then they can manipulate their imagination. Once they, once they, they can manipulate their imagination, these topics become very easy to teach. But the, the key is to teach them to manipulate their, their imagination to manipulate algebra so get them to to this level and then they can manipulate algebra so manipulating algebra would be something like this so here uh, you would be asked to find the uh, to, to make X the subject so being able to manipulate algebra would be you moving these components about so that X could be on its own so here you would imagine this to be one bubble one bubble times both sides by the bottom bubble so that would then be this so, so our aim is to get them to this level here to be able to manipulate algebra. So, hang on. So, if, if you can't remember how to manipulate this, I will, I will guide you through. Uh, I will, I, I will, um, I will guide you. I will guide you how to manipulate this, and then you can then in turn guide your child to uh, to manipulate this. So, so the aim here is to get them to a level of age of age fifteen, around about fifteen, so that they, they so that they can manipulate algebra. But before they can manipulate algebra, they need to be able to read algebra. So reading algebra would me would be me presenting something like this and, and asking you to work out why when a is two. So when a is two, you can put this into here, and then here you've got to square it, put the two into the a, uh, and then and so on. Put this b into here. And again, if you can't remember how to do this, I will guide you. I will guide you on how to do this. You can then in turn guide your child. On how to do this. So, uh, so, so the aim here, the ultimate aim is to get them to be able to manipulate algebra. But before we can teach them to manipulate algebra, we need to teach them how to read algebra. So once they know how to read algebra, you can present them with a lot more interesting scenarios. For example, you, you, you can give them this scenario here where, where you, where you present them with a formula and then, uh, and then ask them, if you were to drop a cannonball and a snooker ball, which one would hit the ground first, and how long, and how long will it take? And then you, you, you can give them, you can specify the height of the building, let's say 100 meters. Um, here we're, we're, we're on Earth, gravity on Earth is 10. So, so you can, you can change this G here. You can change this G and say, well, we're no longer on Earth, we're on the moon, where G is 1.622. Um, or, or you can change the height of the building, where this is 120 meters. You, 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 you can, by, by knowing the height of the building, by knowing gravity, you can work out the time it takes for the cannonball to hit the ground. Once your child is able to read algebra, you can then present them with interesting scenarios. Scenarios where it would make learning a lot more fun. So once they are able to read algebra, you can, you can give them, for example, this scenario here, where you have a pendulum of length L, and the time it takes to do one swing is given by capital T. You can then present them with this formula. And then, and then maybe you can set up in your home a pendulum, let, uh, measure it, let's say two meters, and then get them to time how long it takes to do one, one swing. And then they, they can use this formula to work out the time it takes to do one swing. Or maybe you can change the scenario here, uh, change it where, where you put them on Jupiter, where gravity is 23.12. So here, the, the point I'm trying to make is that once you give them depth, you can you can ask a lot more interesting questions, questions that would hope that would hopefully get them to ask you more interesting questions. So so once you pres once you um, once you once you put them on Jupiter, maybe tell them that you can't you can't really stand on Jupiter because it's not a solid ground. So by you telling them that, hopefully they will then ask you why can't you stand on Jupiter? And then if you don't know the answer, then then direct them to their science teacher at school. But the point is that get them to read, get them to be able to read algebra. Once they know how to read algebra, then you can present them with a lot more interesting scenarios. So get them to be able to, 
So, so the ultimate aim is to get them to manipulate algebra. But before they can manipulate algebra, they need to they need to be able to read algebra. But before they can read algebra, they need to be able to um, they need to be able to understand the concept of equations. So, um, so before you can teach them to read algebra, you will need to to be able to, you will need we will need to teach them how to um, how to solve equations. How to, how a balance. We will need to show them how um, how a balance works. So, for example, um, so for example, they they have to work out the number of sweets in each bag, and each bag uh, contains the same number of sweets. So, so here they they would probably guess this. They would probably guess oh, ten sweets here, ten sweets here, ten, 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 ten. If they so, so their their normal strategy would be to blindly guess. So over on this side you would have fifty two sweets. Over on this side you would have thirty eight sweets. Here it's not true. The two the two sides don't balance. So so they would try nine. But the point here is that. We would need to teach them the concept of a balance. So here, the, an easier way would be to remove three bags from each side, and then you're left with two bags, and then and then you would remove two sweets, and then you've got two bags, and then you cut it in half. You then cut it in half. So each each uh, each bag must contain three sweets. The the point is that before you can teach them to read algebra, you need to teach them the concept of a balance. You need to teach them the concept of of an equation. With an equation, you can add equally, take away equally, divide equally. The point is that we will need to teach them how to use a balance. Uh, so, so for example, uh, two bags contains um, contains three sweets. So here you would divide both sides by two. So divide both sides by two. Then you then you would know that each. Uh, so so here you would divide both sides by two. So uh, so this case x must be three. Or, or maybe give them something like this. If you present maths in this manner, it, it, it's much easier for a child to understand because they can relate to this scenario here. They can't really relate to this. So here, here you've got a um, a quarter of a bag. Oops, hang on, sorry, uh, bear with me. So here you've got a quarter. This is a quarter of a bag. This is one bag. This is a quarter of a bag. So tell them that you've got a quarter of a bag here, but a quarter of a bag contains two. Uh, two sweets. So therefore, one whole bag must contain must contain eight sweets. So here you would here you would times both sides by two. Uh, by 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 four. It, times means make an exact copy of something. So here you've got a quarter times it by four means you make an exact copy of it. So times it by four. So here you times it by four. Times this by four it means you make an exact copy of it. You see, teaching teaching your kid to um, to Teaching math your kids in this in using this is a lot more powerful than 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 teaching them to to process this thing here. Okay, so um, but but the the point here is that in order to teach them to um uh to to read algebra, we need to teach them the concept of an equation. So so tell them that they can easily remove two things at once. For example, remove these two things at once, and the uh, and the and the scale will still be balanced. They they can take away an equal amount. Even even though they're taking away two things at the same time, at the same time, it, it will still be okay when it comes to uh, to an equation. The point here is that we need to be able to teach them to manipulate thing uh, manipulate algebra. But before we can do that, we need to teach them how to read algebra. Before we can teach them how to do that, we need to um, to teach them how a balance works. So, but before we can before we can even teach them how a balance works. We need to teach them these. We need to teach them simplif simplification, where I will explain these as we go along. Okay. But the point here is that we need to um, we need to teach them how to manipulate. That our our ultimate aim is to teach them how to manipulate algebra. But before we can teach them how to manipulate algebra, we need to teach them how to read algebra. Before we can teach them how to read algebra, we need to teach them how to how how our balance works. Before we can teach them how how an equation works. We need to teach them this, we need to teach them this, we need to teach them this, and so on here. Okay, so so I will guide you each step of the way. You hopefully you will then guide your child. Okay?